Spotify is currently the world's most used streaming platform. From music to podcasts and audiobooks, the streaming app hosts a variety of content and has over 286 million active users across 92 countries. In June 2020, Spotify's market cap was estimated to be around $48.2 billion. But it wasn't always like this for the streaming juggernaut. So, how did Spotify get to this point? Spotify is the brainchild of two Swedish entrepreneurs, Daniel Ek and Martin Lorentzen, who decided to change the way people were listening to music in the 2000s. Ek and Martin wanted to fill the gap between illegal services like Napster and Apple Music, which asked customers to pay $2 per track. Before Spotify came around, listening to music wasn't as easy as it has now become. Piracy meant that people could illegally download hundreds of songs within seconds over the internet. The MP3 audio format compressed audio files to smaller sizes, which were easier to share with people all over the world. This gave rise to illegal platforms such as Napster and LimeWire, which have both pretty much fallen off the grid since then. It was in 2008 that Spotify first made its way into the market. It was difficult for the newly established streaming platform to convince people to pay for music when they had become so used to downloading entire albums for free. In the initial phase, Spotify managed the growth of its platform by making its free ad-supported tier available on an invite-only basis. This meant that users who had found their way onto the free tier could invite their friends to join them. This was similar to how Google had rolled out Gmail a few years earlier. Five months later, Spotify had reached its millionth user. By September of the same year, the platform was available on smartphones with its first mobile app for Android and iOS. Two months later, Spotify made its biggest move at the time, making the app available on Nokia's Symbian platform, which had a 50% share of the smartphone market at the time. Yep, that's how powerful Nokia used to be. Spotify won over music enthusiasts with the wide range of options it had to offer. The extremely attractive user interface and sophisticated algorithm provided people with customized playlists and song suggestions. For just $10 a month, you didn't have to pay for individual albums. Millions of songs, albums, and artists of all eras and genres were now accessible to everyone, all thanks to Spotify. The interactive platform put the user in control providing a music streaming experience that was and has remained unparalleled. Eck and Lorenzen, the company's founders, invested a huge amount of money to engineer the platform's user interface and functioning. They raised around $2.7 billion in 22 funding rounds, including multiple debt financings. The founders knew that the only way for Spotify to compete with free pirated music was to provide users with an experience that would push them to pay for its usage, even when they can easily torrent every song in the world. Even as a prototype, Eck and Lorenzen made sure that the platform provided a seamless listening experience. They worked on making the app as lightweight as possible to make the user experience smooth and seamless. This prototype provided high quality and completely legal music without any downloads. This was a huge hit among Spotify's first batch of users. In just one year, the company had to hire hundreds of new people to help with product development because of its massive success in the market. As Spotify focused solely on developing their user experience and maintaining exclusivity, the founders understood exactly what the right time was to share the platform with mainstream audiences. Because of the fall in global music industry revenues, Eck and Lorenzen easily convinced labels like Sony, Universal, EMI, and Warner Music to let Spotify publish their music on the platform. Spotify needed these four labels as much as they needed a new way to reach young music fans. These big four record labels have now become Spotify's greatest stakeholders, and the partnership continues to reach new heights with every passing day. Spotify then became a huge hit within Europe for its functionality that allowed people to create and share playlists. In 2010, Spotify was integrated into one of the greatest social media platforms of all time, Facebook. The partnership skyrocketed Spotify's fame 
and helped it expand across the Atlantic Ocean from Europe to America. By 2011, the streaming platform was a raging success in Europe and was slowly making its way to America. With 10 million tracks in its catalog and more than 1 million users, the company struck deals with American brands like Coca-Cola, Motorola, Reebok, and Sprite to propel itself within American audiences. At first, the platform was completely free, with some restrictions. But when Spotify gradually launched a premium version of the service, featuring no ads, unlimited skips and plays, along with offline streamings, people all over the world couldn't wait to get their hands on it. The instant success of both free and paid versions of Spotify made way for the company to develop a mobile app that went on to give extreme competition to Apple's iTunes. In 2013, the platform launched its user-centric app that was functional for both premium and free users. A huge factor behind the company's success at the time was the way it bridged the gap between the paid and non-paid versions. The product developers spent a huge chunk of time trying to make sure both kinds of users were provided with an optimal experience, regardless of the amount they paid. This helped Spotify attract users of all kinds, increasing its yearly revenue. Over the years, Spotify has consistently outperformed all other streaming platforms, mainly due to its impeccable user experience and accessibility. Despite Spotify's legal battles with Apple, and its suppressing business tactics against the company, the platform has still managed to stay on top. With personal features like Discover Weekly, Release Radar, and Time Capsule, all of which use an AI algorithm to curate music choices for every individual user, Spotify is doing what no other streaming service has ever done. The app's growth trajectory has increased immensely over the years. Discover Weekly alone attracted 40 million new users to the app in 2015, and we can only imagine how that number has grown. On February 28, 2018, Spotify filed a direct listing on the New York Stock Exchange, allowing it to formally go public as a business. Perhaps the one thing that makes Spotify stand out is the way this platform has constantly innovated itself. The company now generates over $1.36 billion in yearly revenue and has built a loyal fan base of tens of millions of customers. With new strategies like deep learning to increase its personalization services, Spotify has the potential to take over the world in the near future. All major artists and record labels are heavily invested in Spotify and strongly benefit from the company's success. While this revolutionary app was an ambitious idea in the early 2000s, the hard work behind it was truly worth the risk. It has survived where many other platforms have failed, simply because Spotify was and still is relentlessly dedicated to develop and grow the way it works. By making Spotify an easy, inclusive platform to share in public music, it has retained itself in the industry through personalization, easy accessibility, affordability, and of course, the widest range of music anyone can ever dream of. As Spotify tech reaches close to a $50 billion market cap, it's unclear what the future holds for rival streaming platform Apple Music. That said, Spotify currently has a much larger user base, having grabbed 31% of the total revenue and 35% of total paid subscribers. As opposed to Apple Music's 24% total streaming revenues and 19% share of the total paid subscriptions, this is all in spite of mounting competition from Deezer, SoundCloud, and Jay-Z owned Tidal. Unlike YouTube Music and Amazon Music, Spotify has no other businesses to rely on for revenue, such as cloud computing or e-commerce. More importantly, Spotify doesn't build hardware devices for its app to be preloaded on, such as iPhone. The golden rule behind Spotify's success is that it doesn't ask for any money up front. In fact, you can go for years without ever paying a dime. Sure, Apple may offer a free trial, but you'll have to pony up at some point. But would Spotify be able to hold up against the mounting competition? Or is it going to be toppled by its rivals in the coming years? We'll find out with time. That's a wrap for how Spotify turned free music into a $48 billion valuation. What do you think will be the future of Spotify? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.